Well, hello, friends, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at a clock. And the we today, as you can see, first of all, I'm Pearlism. Everybody in the land knows that. And everybody in the land should know John from Off the Wall Hockey. We did a video on his channel there not too long ago, free agency video. It was freaking awesome. Love working with him. He, uh, he's got a great channel over there. Go check it out. It, it is awesome, especially when hockey gets going and he does his lives. Got to see it, man. Got to see it. Plus, we got the Professor Joe, Joe Bork. Uh, he uh, he works with me at BPOW Picks and Patreon. You can go check it out. We give fine picks over there. People make lots of money. If you like that sort of thing, you can go do that. And he also has uh, Sport Fanatic News, uh, he, that uh, a YouTube channel as well that we'd work together and he does his own stuff on. Joe and John, how are you doing today? And uh, thank you for coming. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Doing really well. Thanks for uh, having me on as well as usual. It's fun to talk about hockey whenever we can. Yeah, buddy. So we're doing a series. Um, we did, uh, I did, I did Anaheim. Uh, sorry, I did Anaheim with uh, um, Delhi, Anthony Shardelli, fantastic writer as well. And uh, we did, I just did Calgary. I'll post it up in a little while. I know you're all on the edge of your seats, but it's coming. And uh, we did, what else did I do? Did I do, I did Boston. Well, anyways, we're doing Buffalo. We're doing Buffalo today. What are we doing Buffalo about? We're doing Buffalo basically looking at their review of their free agency, the, what they did, and what they may do in the future. And in this case, I think we're going to do it kind of from the uh, uh, slant that we are the GM and what kind of what would we may have done up until now and what we're what we would do if we were, Mr. Adams there, Kevin Adams, you know, almost it seems like with his experience, we could have almost got that job pretty if we just played a card. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're going to look at the Buffalo Sabres, what they're going to do and what uh, what uh, what they have done. We'll start with you, John. Um, what, what's the first kind of topics that you would look into? Maybe things you might do a little differently or where you might go from here if you had that salad on your table. <laughs> well, uh, this uh, this is not not an easy job in Buffalo here. Um, obviously, right now they still have three major restricted free agents that they need to get signed and Victor Olofsson, Sam Reinhart, and Linus Olmark. Um, they've got over $13 million in cap space, but certainly uh, a good chunk of that is going to be taken up when you get those three players signed. Um, goaltending, to me, is still the biggest thing holding holding Buffalo back here. Um, Carter Hutton has not worked out at all as as a starter goal, starting goaltender, which he was brought in to be. Olmark's been solid. Olmark has not played poorly, but I don't think he's a guy that can shoulder... You know, playing you know 62 to 65 games a season and and have the whole weight of a team on him. He's a decent goaltender, but he's not an elite starter or anything like that. You, if you're Buffalo, you, you've got to be looking at this season as uh, whether it's through trade or however you want to do it. You've got to find a way to fix this goaltending situation um, because this team, no matter who they add up front. You know, they've got Eichel, they just added Taylor Hall, they've got Skinner, they've got um, Olofsson, you know, they've got talent up front, but this team is not going to go there until they figure out goaltending and keeping the puck out of their own net. So the first thing you would do then is try to solve the goaltending issue Yes. for the Sabres. Joe, what would you say the first order of business would be for the Buffalo Sabres to uh, be in any um, position to make the playoffs next year, which it appears they are intending on doing. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, first and foremost, maybe John and I should apply to be in the organization because we're thinking along the same lines uh, <laughs> right now because I was thinking goaltending first. So I'll go to the restricted guy. I think uh, with the way Olofsson, he's only played 60 games in his career so far. In those 60 games, he has 46 points. Uh He's a guy that you gotta. He's a guy that uh, you would benefit from how teams are starting to give like baseball esque contracts in hockey now. Where you try to get out in front of the prime of the player, so you try to pay them like three and a half now for like a longer contract or four or something, and then 
you have them so then they don't get that big deal until after that one's over. I think with how Olofsson's progressed, he's a type of player I would try to see if you could get his camp to do a three-year or even better four-year deal around somewhere in that 3.5, four parameter if you can to get him on something that would probably be a bargain one or two years down the line, probably next year with how the kid's developing and now that you brought in more offensive skill. And you're going to have the guys to mix in around him to really get those numbers up. And then we all know Sam Reinhardt has to be uh, signed and extended. Um, and they have to get that taken care of. And then Linus Olmark is the third guy. You have to have a good goal we can go to. Like John said, he's not a star by any stretch. He really should probably be a 1B uh, mm-hmm. going back and forth with somebody. But uh, you need to get him signed up, too, because he should be your starter. And we'll have to see what comes of Carter Hutton because it's been a failed experiment. But we did find out he had that eye condition. So maybe now, since he has eye surgery, but actually look like he did a couple of years ago before being on Buffalo rather than how he's been since being on Buffalo. But that's obviously a bigger ask. I'm just saying you never know. That's a, that's a huge risk to rely on, which is why I'm shocked they relied on it because Hutton really hasn't been great in a couple of years because of that idea. It kind of surprises me that they counted him being guys in a season. So... I would say what John said, get goalies, sign your restricted guys, and then Olofsson get out in front, try to get a good team-friendly three year deal that he's also going to make good money, but it's not going to be like five and a half, six million dollars like it could be if you just keep giving them one-year deals to hold them over. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a heck of a... I, I agree with that. And, and being that Olofsson is sort of a late bloomer guy that came in, he's probably looking to for some security now. Uh, he would probably be a good candidate to take like maybe four to four and a half million for the next six years or something like that. Um, he had, he's really only had one, uh, he's had one really good year, but it's looked very, he looked very consistent all through the year. I think it's worth the gamble. I mean, if the worst thing he did was go, uh, become a 20 goal, 40 goal guy, you're still not over the bar too much at four and a half million. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a heck of an idea. Well, the one thing I will say with Olofsson, though, is, too, he's a seventh-round pick that's already worked himself up to not too far under a points per game because, like I said, 46 and 60 games in your career for a sev- for anybody, let alone a guy that worked his way up from the seventh-round pick, yeah. um, I think that would make me want to pay him a little bit more, too, because I know this guy never had anything given to him. He's not a player that ever came in going, I'm definitely going to be here. He had to have that work ethic and tenacity to get to where he is now. So, I think that's a very doable thing. Maybe the more undoable thing right now would be the goaltending situation. Yeah. Uh, I, I, t- um, I was going to go into what I, I would do here, and I, but I was totally – I'm. we're all on the same boat here. We never talked about this beforehand, by the way. just so happens we really – uh, we watch hockey a lot and we know we've it's on our minds. I don't know about you guys, but it's on my mind an unholy amount of time in my life, <laughs> a <laughs> divorce worthy amount of time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would say goaltending for sure. And I'd be willing to throw out Allmark out there as trade bait with somebody else to get a goaltender, especially since it doesn't seem like, at least in the near future, that that defense is going to be able to be solved. That would have been my number one. But um, really, if you're not going to have the best defense in the world, probably have a darn good goaltender instead. Like uh, Winnipeg really showed that last year. Uh, Now, getting somebody in that round, like a Vesnas-type goaltender probably at this point is not really out there at the moment uh, that would be the question if anybody can help me out here if you put Allmark out with say your first next year and honestly I would strongly consider it if this is team really wants to start winning right now if I've got the general ma- owner saying look I don't want to rebuild nonsense we're looking at winning right now the first thing I want to do is get the best possible goaltender that I can get because any team as we can see 
with uh, Dallas, who got outplayed a lot in the playoffs, but made it to the finals on the backs on the back of fantastic goaltending by Hudobin. Mm-hmm. Now, I really don't want to roll the dice on a goaltender getting hot as much as a goaltender always being hot. Um, what goaltender is there out there, though? And what would you give for him? My first choice would be to call Columbus and uh, and see what the price for Yunus Corpusala would be. He he was phenomenal in the playoffs. Um, Merz, they have Merz Lickens and Corpusalo. I, I think if you were to send Olmark in the deal back to Columbus to be kind of a 1B type goaltender, then I definitely think you could get Corpusalo out of Columbus. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't even know if you'd have to give up Olmark and then you'd have both because they don't really have all that much leverage. Um, actually, Merzlikens, though, is not going to be up for expansion. He's he's not. No. I don't think he'll. they'll have to protect Merzlikens because he hasn't had two years full yet, right? Am I wrong about that? Um, I'm not. I he last didn't play was right a, away last year. Yeah. yeah, he came up at some point last year. Yeah, Just so I don't think he's going to have and then he came up. But for me, I was going to say it has to be like, I'm only thinking of older goalies that could be available, unless if you want to take a chance on that Montebal kid or somebody that showed some signs uh, in general, but you're taking a bigger chance there because you haven't seen game like length from them yet. You've only seen short spurt periods of good play. Um, I would think if the whatever direction Dallas is going, they got a kid in Audi that's not too far from being ready to be an NHL goalie. Uh, we saw him come in for a short time in the playoffs. If they want to trade Ben Bishop, that's an option. Uh, he also has a pretty good goalie contract. Um, and then another one is, of course, Flower. If Vegas is just saying they're not trading him because they can't find a good trade, if you give them a first-round pick and all mark, they might debate it with how good Robin Leonard is because you don't need a Hall of Fame-level backup behind Le- Robin Leonard. You, mm-hmm. you, you would be fine with uh, – Linus Allmark as your 1B behind Robin Leonard. So I would think uh, Flurry could be another. Because if they think they're going to win now, you don't need a good young goaltender. You just need a good goalie if you th- if, if Buffalo is truly thinking they can win in the next two to three years. Yeah, and so. Vegas, Vegas certainly doesn't need to be spending $12 million on their goaltenders no. with the, the cap situation that they're in. Exactly. So it's a best of both worlds situation, kind of for uh, both teams. So. But then they're looking. They would. I think the problem is they don't want. They're not going to bother trading them if they have to take, if they have to uh, retain any salary. And we just mentioned how they have to sign Olafson. How much did you say? Twelve million or something like that. They have left. Uh, and then what do we do with? They also have to sign Reinhardt. So possibly we're ponying up Reinhardt for a trade for a goaltender out there as well, which could be possible depending on, like, I just don't see the goaltending pool being all that strong right now. Um, that would be my, the biggest problem. Uh, I don't think you're going to get Reinhardt. I mean, if, if Vegas wants to get rid of Fleury, they don't, uh, they've shown that they don't want to give anything up in return. However, if you're going to give up Fleury, do you want to give up that young, uh, goaltender you already have in Buffalo because that leaves him pretty empty. Well, they do have like in that one Allmark. kid that just can't develop. Sure. No, all Mark, but I'm saying they have uh, the foreign kid that just can't develop as well since they drafted him. Uh, I usually so botch his name, but Uka Pekka liking in the goaltender. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but he's a little bit away. But if you want to take a chance that he's going to develop like you first thought and just be taking longer to do so rather than actually have changed his ranking in your system, then you would be more okay with getting rid of Allmark. If the way that Lightning's played has changed his ranking, then I would think you wouldn't be as peachy keen with getting rid of Allmark as he's in his 20s getting in the next three years to his age 30 season when you don't have another full-hearted guy you're confident in. Uh, yeah. 
right behind. And I think but, that uh, Vegas would want Allmark because they've already mentioned that they might keep Flurry because of the season that's coming up, right? Mm-hmm. So you, uh, that's any true. team that's smart right now wants to have two really good goaltenders, if at all possible. Yeah, um, I didn't even think about that, but we're going to see a lot more backup goaltenders getting big time playing time with this coming season with it being a condensed schedule. Yeah, that's the reason why Montreal went out and got Allen. Mm-hmm. And I looked really foolish. I remember I did a video on that, and I thought, <laughs> okay, that's it for price. Price is gone, blah, 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 blah. And it was all because I read the uh, cap wrong. I thought they had $14 million left in cap space when they only had four. And I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, no, that- <laughs> the, other, yeah, the other way around. You no, they, they had, had $14 million, million, they million, and I had thought they million, had- yeah. That's what it was, yeah. Yeah, the other way around, and I was just like, "Oh gosh, what a waste of a video that was." <laughs> <laughs> I will say those, uh, Pirlo. You brought up a brilliant point. Their defense, if there was other defensemen in the market still, other than Sammy Vodden, if they want to see him sign Sammy Vodden and go for it, because he'll play in the East. Uh, Hamannik won't. Um, but other than Vodden, who's still a guy that you can get more overall production from, and not just one side of the puck like most of the other defensemen left, unless if you get Char for one year. I like um, him a lot. Yeah, that, yeah there's um, not really much you could put in there other than those two because Vodnin's a good guy that's going to help younger guys. Char, sure as hell, was a good guy that's going to help younger guys, but I don't know if he'll want to play in Buffalo the last year of his career. Um, so, or one of the last years. So I would say Vodnin's your best bet if you're going to bring in another defenseman because – you got Ristolainen, who I think everybody really likes. Jake McCabe's actually a solid defenseman. And then you got Rasmus Dahlin. Beyond them, you got good guys like Colin Miller, who swings between a 3 4 for most people. And then you got Montour, who hasn't been able to develop to what he was supposed to be since being on the Ducks. Um, and then you got Yukahara, who is the guy that would be best to bring in a young guy for because he's only 21 still learning or not a young guy a veteran like Vodnin excuse me to have around a young guy like him uh so that's why I would say the only defenseman if I'm them if I'm going to spend any money on because Vodnin is still going to cost a couple million bucks would probably be Sammy Vodnin because it fits into guys you want to help develop like Yukahara and then you want to still be able to if Brandon Montra stays on your team you want to be able to maybe have somebody around him that's able to get him going a little bit more as a right-handed, good passing defenseman. And he's a very – he plays – what the game that Montre was supposed to develop into was similar to what Vodnin actually does, where Montre just never become that good. So if he could actually get him to be a poor man's version of himself, that would be the best season of Brandon Montour. And so we there's were talking, just a couple things there. John and I were talking about this earlier, though, that – uh, in another video that we did, the Buffalo has a whole lot of defensemen, just not many that can play in the NHL very well. <laughs> and uh, so that was the problem as to why we would save on it. Like you mentioned, uh, um, oh, what's his name? I always forget his name, the freaking Finn that he just mentioned that said a lot. Yoki no, Haru? Not Yoki Haru, the other one. Res- oh. Resto? Ristolainen, yeah. Ristolainen, no. Oh, okay. See, you say a lot of you said a lot of people like him. Well, John and I are both not one. If, if he's on your top pair, you're not making the playoffs. You're not making the playoffs. That's for sure. Yeah, he's just he he's he's like a wild stallion out there, and he never learned how to play the position very well. Uh, it's he he can hit. He can do a lot of things. He just doesn't do those things in the order necessary to be a good defenseman. <laughs> he hasn't well, put all the tools in the toolbox. So, yeah, that's John, what would you him. say about that? How would you fix their defense if possible? Or just get trade off Miller if you possibly can. That's the problem with Buffalo right now, isn't it? That they have so many defensemen and nobody wants to take on contracts right now, right? Yeah, they've got a ton of D-men. Um, but they don't have a lot of good D men. I mean, Ras- Rasmus Dahlin is your number one guy. I mean, this this guy's twenty mm-hmm. years old, forty plus point D man already. I think eventually can he could potentially become a, a sixty plus point defenseman. Um, he's your best player. I really do like Jake McCabe. Um, I, I, I like I like Jake McCabe. I think he could be a really solid middle pair guy. I Other agree. than that, there's there's not much I like in Buffalo. There's a lot of people that don't agree with us, John. About no, that. I, I like Jake McCabe. I do I like not like Ristolainen. Um, I think 
they, they do guys like people don't like plus minus and i don't plus minus though when you get into the extremes like if you look at someone who's plus you know a hundred you know that's looking really good if you're ristolainen is minus 145 in his career He's and minus I, every single year. In every, yeah. Yeah, and he's playing on terrible teams. And Buffalo hasn't been good his entire time there. So I get that. But you're minus 145. Like and, you are. Your possession stats are pooty too. Like yeah, everything he, is pooty. About him. We also have to remember, though, when you have off goaltending, which Allmark really didn't emerge until this year when Hudden was struggling with that eye issue. It's going to bring up your plus minus. It's going to bring down your plus minus well, because yeah, really, you're yeah. like just let in. Yeah. So, but in comparison uh, to the rest of the team, he is like always very much down. Oh, I agree. I stuff. agree with that. That's why he should be on your second line. He should yeah. probably be like your fourth he defenseman a with a good, yeah, with a very good uh, second line because that's going to make him look good. That's why I said. No matter who you get, for him, bringing in Achara would be better just because a bigger defenseman could teach Ristolain in the ways where a Vodnin would be better for, like, if you're trying to get Montra going, mm-hmm. and especially Yukahara and guys like that. But for Ristolain and bringing in Achara, I personally yeah, bringing like in Achara would be best. Oh, he's a good def- Yeah, he's a good pickup. I personally I like that. Uh, that was a good move. That was one of the few good top- moves that was done in the past little while. Yeah. Yeah, by their old G. My uh, top two uh, defensemen, if I had to pick favorites on Buffalo, would be, uh, what's his name? Rasmus Dahlin, obviously, and then Henry Yugoharu. Because I like Jake McCabe, and everybody knows how much I like the underrated defensemen that don't get enough recognition. But that's usually obvious for people, because everybody knows how much I like people that don't get enough recognition. So I'll give the credit to Dahlin and uh, Yokoharu and then Jake McCabe. So you have three solid guys that it seems like we all like. Mm-hmm. You got to figure out how the other three mix into that puzzle now, That's and it doesn't the... mix well. Um, I'm not a f- Miller. Miller in the right situation has a role on a team, but I, in this situation, it's too much of a role for him to be <laughs> able to. He doesn't have the tools to fill all the holes necessary here, and that's really the problem with the rest of the defensemen on this team, right? Yeah, M- Miller or Montour needs to get moved. One of those guys needs to get moved because you you when you look at right shots, you've got Risto, you've got Miller, Montour, uh, and you've got uh, Yoki Haru. And Yoki Haru needs to be in the lineup. I he's twenty one years old. Absolutely. That, that kid belongs in the lineup. He's a good young defenseman. Yeah. Either one of those right shots, Miller or Montour. One of those guys. Trading one of them out would be one of my first moves that I would make. If you can do it, I think they're trying to do it. The problem is, is the rest of the league looks at their roster and goes, "Yeah, I don't really want him either." <laughs> so well, that's I the would kind take of the problem. Miller, though, kind of because, stuck with them. Yeah. I think Miller has, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one year left. They both have one year left. That's what yeah. if. I would have to venture to guess a guy because with Vegas he put up two pretty good years you would be better off probably being able to trade would be Miller. That's just my guess yeah. because he has more proven uh, stats in the league where mantra has been banged up more in his career and isn't as proven. So that would yeah. be my guess. But. Yeah, and about Colin Miller, if I'm a contending team that's looking to add to my defense depth, I mean, Colin Miller would be a great bottom pair, like 5'6 yeah, guy to add absolutely. to that team. Yes. So if, if if you're if you're a playoff level team, I I would be answering the phone on Colin Miller. Not, I think he's at three and a half million right now, though, isn't he? Three point uh, eight, 3. 8, 8 seven five. five. That's yeah. a little steep for your five six in a cap for in a cap strapped world. So yeah, yeah, the, the maybe cap... somewhere down the road when when halfway through the season when he's already paid some of his money and stuff like that, they might uh, be able to find a home. If you could that, get that Buffalo makes... to retain. Oh, even a million of that. Yeah. If you could get Buffalo to retain a million, now you're at two point eight, and and that could be. Yeah, I I think Colin Miller brings enough to the table where he he's at least tradable, and he's only twenty seven years old. Yeah, I think it's not that he's not tradable eventually. I just think right now it's difficult for teams to put that kind of money on their five six. Uh, with the cap space and stuff like that, that's going well, on. Just, what about Columbus? Because Columbus just traded out all that caps, all that cap space, and then didn't get Hall or 
any big free agent, at least yet, unless they get Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Columbus has yeah. the space to do that now. They could do it. Yeah, I don't know need, exactly. They They're team. doing something with that money, but what exactly it's going to be. I know they've been in on Lion A. I think they are, we, we talked about uh, Hoffman. Yeah, I'm uh, waiting for them because they, they didn't clear that space for no reason. Like, they've C-Bus got something. makes sense. C-Bus By makes the way, sense. before we go on with that, I wanted to mention the Hoffman to Carolina that I came up with. I was talking, I wish I remember his name now in the Facebook groups. The problem with that is they're going to have, they got Hamilton to sign. They got mm-hmm. Svechnikov coming up right away. So my idea of going to Carolina for Hoffman is probably not that great. So as it turns out, so Columbus seems to be the number one spot there. And I, I think well, the issue with Carolina also is both of their goalies are expiring at the same time that are both not really full-time starters. Mm-hmm. So they have to figure out what they're doing there too. So that's right. another money uh, hungry position to throw to. But I love John's idea of Columbus because everybody, my one friend's a Blue Jackets fan and he, uh, complains about how the bottom parts of their defense when there's injuries don't always have the depth that you would like on other teams so mm-hmm. adding someone like colin miller when you got rid of some of your other defensemen would make sense as your four or five i, I think they're going to give some of those young guys a shot there and gravikoff is going to have a bigger role next year and he's freaking phenomenal oh, but, yeah, it, but he would this is a buffalo a yeah, yeah i i think uh Ga- gavrikov's your number three you know, three right now, or well, maybe Savard. Savard and Gavrikov's your your second pair. Yeah, second. M- Miller on that third pair would be a nice addition. Wouldn't be too bad. And maybe if they they whiff on the offense that they're looking for, they 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 go look at Buffalo for something like that. But yeah. right now, I think they're focusing on the fact that in the playoffs, when it came down to it, they didn't have that shooter. Hoffman mm-hmm. was huge for them, a high percentage shooter like that. They just didn't have anybody to do that sort of thing. But boys yeah, and agree. girls, we're getting close to that time. It's uh, It's been awesome. And Kevin Adams, I know you're watching because everybody's watching. Everybody's watching in the land. We just solved all your problems for you, buddy. You were all, you were all wondering, what am I going to do with my defense and everything? <laughs> and now it's all taken care of. So you can go on vacation, have yourself a nap and – Everything will be good for you. Thank you all for watching. Remember, hit the subscribe and the bell. You already have. You already have. If you haven't up until now, you're never going to. Because I was, look at all the great logic and and pearls that came out of these fine people right here. It was fantastic. Thank you for coming in, John. Uh, You got, have you did a video last OI? I haven't seen it pop up in my screen yet. Did you just do a video? Yeah, I did one today about the um, five biggest free agent signings so far. Oh, cool. So you got to go over there and check that out. Five biggest free agents. And uh, Joe, what have you did in this last little while here? Mostly uh, podcasting. I've been writing a couple things, though, that I'm going to have out on Pub Sports, OT, and um, OT Heroics, and then what's it called? Flyers Nitty Gritty would be more the early of next week for Flyers coverage. But just a couple of different pieces I'm working on along with podcasting. So just stay tuned for those. Right on. And uh, you can find all my work on steelflyers.com. Go check out that website. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I talk about it all the time. You know all about it. Uh, Until next time, and I don't know what we're going to do together. I know tomorrow we're doing something. We're doing the Boston Bruins with Delhi and possibly more. Whoever wants to join, you can come do that. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.